Hello world, I'm Blackfire1694 and today as my first attempt of an actual YouTube video I will present a late review from a fresh 2019 perspective of Watch Dogs 2. Watch Dogs 2 is an action-adventure open-world game developed by Ubisoft Montreal and published by Ubisoft. It is the sequel to 2014's Watch Dogs and was released worldwide for PlayStation 4, Xbox One and Microsoft Windows on November 2016. You control Marcus Holloway, aka Retro, a hacker who got marked as a criminal by CDOS based on his behavior patterns despite the fact that he was a legit guy, the system also known as Bellwether that generated the criminal activity mini game from Watch Dogs 1. While Marcus was infiltrated inside a CDOS data center to clear his record, DeadSec was monitoring him to evaluate his skills and abilities and see if he would make a good member of the group. After passing the challenge, Marcus gets contacted by DeadSec and eventually recruited. After a beach party during the night, Marcus finds himself in a random house from which he gets out into the wild open world of Watch Dogs. 2 set within a fictionalized version of San Francisco Bay Area which contains San Fran itself, Oakland, Marine, the famous Silicon Valley and two islands. San Francisco is pretty much what you expect from a Ubisoft game, a dense city with parks, skyscrapers, ghettos, rich and poor neighborhoods that are filled with landmarks, shops, interesting locales and people. And it also contains Dead Six, yeah Dead Six, yeah I know. HQ and lots of collectibles. Here you constantly see NPCs on the move, sometimes angry, they fight, they sometimes cause small accidents and are a bit ruder. Oakland is Marcus's hometown, which is a smaller San Fran to be honest, but it does retain its own vibe. It contains smaller urban areas, a bit of forest, some pretty important landmarks like the FBI building, and also collectibles. The NPCs here are found more often in parks, walking, sitting on benches, or playing with their dogs. Marine is a resort style area and actually this is the area that you start the game from. You have a beach, a small port, a couple of shops, villas on water, some great sunsets and also a great view over the Golden Gate Bridge, especially when the San Francisco fog starts to settle. And the hacking game set in this area wouldn't be complete without Silicon Valley, the house of tech giants, privacy controversy, fancy architecture, Stanford University and lots of hipsters. Also the game world has the famous Alcatraz prison in Yerbe Buena Island. DeadSec San Francisco is a hacking group formed from Horatio, a Noodle employee who pretty much hates his job, who also acts as an unofficial leader, or at least he's the one that tries to give the group a focus for their actions. Wrench, who is a one-man wrecking crew, is the gun... <clears throat> sorry, I mean the tech nut of the group. He wears a mask to show his emotions, he's energetic, funny and has an appetite for memes. He's also the one who has a hands-on approach to technology and provides the group with gadgets. Sitara is like the PR manager of the group. She focuses on the image of DeadSec, its propaganda, which consists of graffiti, videos, the anonymous style ones, and public demonstrations. And while she tries to sometimes boss people around, at the core she cares a lot for the members of the group and she's always concerned for the well-being of the members. She also is the one that manages the follower count of the group, actually your XP in the game. Based on follower numbers, DeadSec gets the computing power of the phones and uses them to complete its goals. Josh is the introvert of the group, often the genius behind the keyboard, the one that knows the ins and outs of the mainframe of CTOS, how it works and how it can be exploited. He often offers advices during missions and gives solutions to the problems. The only one that knows CTOS better than Josh is the one and only and Aiden's partner in crime, Raymond Kenny, also known as T-Bone. He has the same motive he had in the first game, which is to get revenge on Bloom and mess up as much of CTOS and Bellwether as possible. Now while we can consider Bellwether or CTOS as the main villains, the face of it all is Dushan Namek, the CTO of Blue, which is the company that stores and funnels personal information gathered from all the companies to Bellwether and tries to use all the info for his own advantage and personal gain. As far as gameplay goes, it is similar to Watch Dogs, but a lot more refined. The shooting for me at least felt great, but I can't deny that the armored enemies are a bit too bullet spongy. I mean, there are some without helmets and they still need a couple of headshots to be killed. The parkour is here also with a more acrobatic touch to it and a more refined movement system. The driving is much much better than the first one and when it comes to hacking, you pretty much can do the same stuff that you could in the first game, but the big addition is that you can now hack cars and 
machines like cranes, platforms, forklifts to manipulate their movement as you see fit and use them to your advantage. This had a bigger impact than expected because let's say if the police chase you, you can stop the cars in their tracks. Also, you can use parked vehicles to get some kills when ambushing enemy control sites. But there are two things that I missed from the first game and they are the ability to manipulate bridges, excusable because San Francisco doesn't have these, and the utility of the stoplight hacks. There is almost no use to mess with the stoplights. At least in my playthrough, there were never enough cars at the crossroad to make a serious accident to stop my followers. You can also frame NPCs so that they are captured by the police or you can do the same to get them killed by local gangs. Speaking of gangs, story-wise, in this game they are the most neglected aspect in my opinion. They are just there, very little background for them, and also the motives behind their actions are never fully explained. In my opinion, the first game did a better job in this regard with the Viceroy's and Lucky Quinn's faction. Marcus's main tool, like Aiden, is his phone. Through it, he can hack everything that he needs, but now it has a bit more functionality to it. You can now download apps like Noodle Maps, Car on Demand, Camera, Driver San Francisco, an uh, Uber minigame, and it's also called like the other game published by Ubisoft some years ago, and other apps also. The research tree is Marcus's main progression system. To gain points, you must find them in the world or level up. The world points are often hidden or blocked behind hacking puzzles and tricky to get in areas. It's basically a talent tree. You can invest in stuff like CTOS manipulation for blackouts and stuff like that, social manipulation, gadgets, and so on. In addition, Marcus's tools extend with the jumper, which is like a Rainbow Six Siege drone, and the quadcopter, which is an actual drone, like the ones we use in real life. They are used to reach places Marcus can't reach and are also an extension of Marcus's hacking abilities because you can use them instead of Marcus to hack the environment, solve puzzles, and have a better stealth approach. When it comes to Arsenal, Marcus has a much better thematic opportunity and that is a 3D printer. I find this to be a much better fit for the game than just going to a gun shop. With it you can print standard weapons or deadsec customized weapons which have a wackier design and are modified to act differently than your standard AK. With it you can also apply paint jobs to your weapons, jumper and quadcopter. When it comes to online modes, I must say that I was pleasantly surprised to find them alive and kicking in 2019. Every day I got invaded multiple times, players joined my world to do co-op activities and when the money truck rolled in, all hell broke loose into my world. Need some context? Okay, so periodically a money truck would spawn into your world and your job is to get the loot. Obviously, it's heavily guarded and as soon as you put your hands on the bag, your wanted level would skyrocket. Additionally to the security and the cops, all players can join the heist and they will hunt you down to get the bounty and they have their full powers without constraint. When it comes to graphics, Watch Dogs 2 is a damn fine looker, although it's a bit of a bad example when it comes to optimization, especially on Ultra, like in many Ubisoft games. Games, but on slightly lower settings you can get a pretty stable 60 fps that for some reason drops to around 50 when driving with higher speeds. The color palette is vibrant, alive and fitting for the less serious approach of the game and the overall aesthetic of the world and characters. Overall, the game has been met with a positive reception, but according to Ubisoft, it fell short on the sale department, but fortunately it did enough to spawn the upcoming sequel, Watch Dogs Legion. Now, in my opinion, this game has been amazing. I've put in 62 hours, did all the side operations and finished the main story. I didn't do the non-story related events though, like kart races, and I didn't finish all the driver San Francisco missions, and I didn't find all the Scout X landmarks, although they encourage exploration, which is a good thing also. I love the setting, the characters, their story, although underdeveloped in uh, certain aspects like the gangs and Dushan the mech not being too fleshed out is serviceable at most. The art style, the graphics and the gameplay made me fall in love with the game. For Legion I want a better villain, a better background for the underground life of London and hopefully a good implementation of the control all NPCs part of the game. I totally recommend this game especially now because it's heavily discounted often to 80% off. This has been my first proper video on YouTube, I hope you enjoyed it, please like, share, subscribe, smash the notification bell to get updated on my next videos and I wait to see what you think in the comments below. I accept all constructive criticism and I try to put your advices to good use. See you next time, it's been a pleasure. Oh yeah, and also I know that I need a better mic, I'm working on it, I promise.